In the vast expanse of space, the Galactic Council's Grand Chamber was a beacon of civilization and cooperation. Towering arches and holographic displays filled the room, creating a symphony of light and color as representatives from myriad star systems convened. Today was particularly significant. The chamber buzzed with an undercurrent of skepticism and curiosity over the newest applicants to the Council, a species from a relatively primitive planet known as Earth. Ambassador Jack Miles of Earth, a distinguished figure with a calm demeanor, entered the chamber amidst a variety of alien species. His arrival was met with a mix of intrigue and thinly veiled disdain. Rumors had preceded him, tales of a species that still relied on chemical propulsion and metal projectiles, which to the technologically advanced assembly seemed almost quaint. Standing at the podium, Jack began, Esteemed members of the Galactic Council, we come before you not just to seek admission but to offer partnership. While our technology may differ, our spirit for innovation and peace speaks the same language as yours. A ripple of laughter and murmurs spread through the chamber. Ambassador Thara of the Trilax Federation, a towering being with shimmering scales, voiced the Council's skepticism. Ambassador Miles, while your rhetoric is appreciated, this Council values advancements and contributions. You speak of missiles, primitive explosive projectiles. Surely you just bringing such antiquated technology before this assembly. The laughter grew, echoing off the metallic walls, as more members of the council joined in the mockery. Jack's face remained impassive, betraying no hint of offense. Instead, he confidently replied, Perhaps a demonstration would better communicate the value we bring. Curiosity piqued. The council agreed to a demonstration, intrigued by the human's calm confidence amid the scorn. Ambassador Miles concluded, Thank you for your willingness to observe. We shall arrange a display of our capabilities. We invite you to witness that even the simplest tools, in the right hands, can achieve extraordinary outcomes. As the meeting adjourned, clusters of council members gathered, whispering and speculating about the upcoming demonstration. Many doubted that anything worthwhile would come from it, but the human's unshaken demeanor had ignited a spark of interest. What could these primitive humans possibly show that would impress the likes of the Galactic Council, with the stage set for a demonstration that could potentially reshape the Galactic Council's view of Earth? Admiral Lisa Chang was busy at work aboard the human flagship, the HMS Vanguard. Her crew, a mixture of seasoned officers and eager young engineers, prepared for an event that would be etched in the annals of both human and galactic history. The chosen location for the demonstration was a remote sector known for its abandoned debris and minimal space traffic, an ideal backdrop for what was to be a display of raw, unanticipated power. The council members, along with their technical advisors and defense analysts, arrived via their advanced cruisers, cloaked in fields of anti-gravitational energy and shimmering protective shields. Sarnik of the Rylar Empire, whose contempt for the humans' technological capabilities had been particularly vocal, approached Admiral Chang with a smirk as he boarded the HMS Vanguard. I am here to witness your species' attempt at impressing the Council. It is not often we gather to observe such rudimentary displays. Admiral Chang, unfazed by the condescension, welcomed the delegates with courtesy. We appreciate your attendance, Ambassador Sarnik. I trust today's demonstration will be enlightening. As the spectators settled into the observation deck, a panoramic view of space before them, Jack Miles joined Admiral Chang to oversee the final preparations. The target, an obsolete council freighter fitted with the latest in shield technology, was towed into position. It would serve as the proof of concept for the human's supposedly outdated missile technology. Back on Earth, engineers had been working feverishly to adapt their missiles for a more compelling demonstration. These weren't mere explosive devices. They had been retrofitted with a compound known as XJ-7, a volatile agent that, according to human scientists, had a unique interaction with the energy frequencies of standard galactic shields. In the control room, Chief Engineer Marcus Lee communicated with Admiral Chang, confirming that all systems were go. Admiral, the missiles are primed, XJ-7 is stable, and telemetry is green across the board. Admiral Chang nodded to Jack who in turn addressed the assembly via the intercom. Ladies, gentlemen, and esteemed beings of the Galactic Council, what you are about to witness is not just a testament to human ingenuity, but a demonstration of our commitment to security and peace. Observe. With a calm press of a button, the first missile launched,
cutting through the void of space towards the derelict ship. Its trajectory was steady, its purpose clear. As it neared the freighter, Sarnik let out a dismissive chuckle, confident in the shield's ability to absorb whatever primitive tech the humans had thrown their way. The missile struck the shield, and to the shock of every observer, instead of fizzling out harmlessly, a brilliant cascade of energy erupted. The shield, far from neutralizing the explosion, seemed to catalyze a more violent reaction than anticipated. The entire freighter was engulfed in a blinding light, disintegrating within seconds into a cloud of debris and sparkling energy. Silence fell over the observation deck. Eyes wide, mouths agape, the council members stared at the empty space where the freighter once floated. The human missiles, simple as they seemed, had turned a state-of-the-art shield into an unwitting amplifier for their destructive power. As the reality of what they had witnessed settled in, the air of superiority and mockery that had pervaded the chamber earlier had vanished, replaced by a mix of respect, fear, and awe. Jack Miles, with a slight smile, turned to the assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome your questions and hopefully your collaboration. The shock of the demonstration reverberated through the Galactic Council. Delegates convened in hushed, urgent meetings, reassessing their stance on human technology and their strategic implications. Meanwhile, back on the HMS Vanguard, the human team was energized, knowing they had just shifted the galactic power dynamics with a single, decisive blow. In the aftermath, Ambassador Jack Miles and Admiral Lisa Chang found themselves fielding a barrage of inquiries and requests from various species interested in the technology. The Council, once dismissive, was now keen to understand the principles behind the human missiles, and more importantly, the mysterious compound XJ-7 that had turned conventional defense strategies on their head. Chief Engineer Marcus Lee held a special briefing for a select group of alien technologists who were particularly intrigued by the human approach to weaponry. What you witnessed, Marcus began adjusting his translator device, was the result of human ingenuity and chemical propulsion, combined with a synthetic compound that reacts unpredictably with energy-based shields. In a secure conference room, diagrams and formulas were projected, showing the molecular structure of XJ-7 and its interaction with typical shield frequencies. The human team explained that the compound was initially developed for mining operations to break through tough planetary crusts, but it was adapted for military use once its potential was recognized. Simultaneously, Admiral Chang convened a strategy session with her senior staff, discussing the implications of their newfound position within the Council. We've got their attention, but this is a double-edged sword, she cautioned. We must be ready to defend our technology and possibly our planet. We need to think about alliances and how we can leverage the situation to ensure Earth's safety and prosperity. Jack Miles, meanwhile, prepared for a formal meeting with the Galactic Council's core members. His goal was to negotiate terms of technology sharing and collaboration, but under strict regulations to prevent misuse and ensure Earth's sovereignty was respected. As preparations continued, the human delegation worked on fine-tuning their diplomatic strategies. Jack outlined the key points of his upcoming speech to the Council, focusing on mutual benefits, the promotion of peace, and the importance of integrating Earth into the Council as a full member with equal standing. Throughout the ship, the mood was one of cautious optimism. The crew practiced drills, checked systems, and ran simulations, ensuring they were prepared for any situation, whether another demonstration was requested, or if their technology provoked a less friendly response from a threatened member of the Council. The atmosphere aboard the HMS Vanguard was charged with anticipation as the day of the formal Galactic Council meeting dawned. Ambassador Jack Miles and Admiral Lisa Chang were up early, going over their plans one last time. The stakes were high, and the eyes of the galaxy were upon them. As the human delegation made their way to the Galactic Council's Grand Chamber, the corridors of the space station were abuzz with whispers and speculation. Many representatives, once skeptical, now regarded the humans with a mix of respect and wariness. Upon arriving at the chamber, Jack Miles stepped up to the central podium, the weight of the moment palpable in the silent anticipation of the gathered assembly. Esteemed members of the Galactic Council, Jack began, his voice resonant and clear. Yesterday we demonstrated a fraction of human innovation and determination. Today we stand before you, ready to discuss how our technology, coupled with our commitment to peace and mutual prosperity, can benefit the galaxy. As Jack spoke, 
Visuals of the missile test along with technical data on the XJ-7 compound were displayed behind him, illustrating the humans' readiness to share and integrate their advancements. Admiral Chang then took the floor, detailing the security protocols and safeguards surrounding the technology. She emphasized the importance of collaboration in developing and deploying technology responsibly. We offer not just weaponry, but also our expertise in energy, engineering, and space travel, underpinned by the human principles of freedom and mutual respect. The presentation was met with applause from some quarters and thoughtful nodding from others. Sarnik of the Rylar Empire, who had mocked the human technology at first, now looked pensive, absorbing the implications of a potential alliance with Earth. Following the formal presentation, the Council opened the floor for a Q&A session. Questions ranged from the technical specifics of the missiles to broader inquiries about human culture and society. Jack and Lisa answered confidently, reinforcing the image of humanity as capable and ready for a role on the galactic stage. After the session, the council members convened in private to discuss the proposal. Meanwhile, Jack and Lisa returned to the HMS Vanguard, where they briefed their team and awaited the council's decision. The mood was hopeful, but they remained prepared for any outcome. Back in the Grand Chamber, after hours of deliberation, the council reached a decision. The doors opened and the human delegation was called back in. The head of the council, a wise and ancient figure named Valen from the Centauri system, stood to deliver the verdict. Humanity has shown itself to be resourceful, resilient, and ready to contribute to our collective security and prosperity, Valen announced. Therefore, we extend an invitation for Earth to join the Galactic Council as a full member, with all associated rights and responsibilities. The decision of the Galactic Council to admit Earth as a full member marked a new era in human history. The news resonated through every corner of Earth and beyond, sparking celebrations and a renewed sense of purpose. Humanity was now a recognized player on the galactic stage, entrusted with both the privileges and the responsibilities that came with this status. In the days following the Council's decision, Ambassador Jack Miles and Admiral Lisa Chang found themselves at the center of diplomatic activities. Embassies from various star systems expressed their interest in establishing formal relations with Earth, eager to explore human culture and to secure technological and defensive collaborations. Admiral Chang, back aboard the HMS Vanguard, coordinated with Earth's newly formed Galactic Department of Defense, outlining the parameters for sharing their missile technology under strict supervision. This included safeguards to prevent the misuse of XJ-7 and other advanced materials Earth might develop in the future. Meanwhile, Jack Miles engaged in continuous dialogues with his counterparts from other civilizations. His goal was to foster a network of mutual support that would ensure Earth's integration into the galactic community was smooth and beneficial. Among the most eager to establish ties were the representatives from the Rylar Empire, whose earlier skepticism had turned into admiration and a keen interest in human strategic acumen. Human technology, especially the advanced missile systems, became a hot topic of discussion across various platforms and meetings. Technical symposiums were organized where human engineers, led by Chief Engineer Marcus Lee, showcased the adaptable and innovative nature of Earth's technology. These forums not only demonstrated human ingenuity, but also opened doors for collaborative research and development projects. On Earth, governments and private sectors mobilized to meet the demands and opportunities presented by their new galactic status. Universities expanded their programs to include interstellar studies, alien languages, and technology exchange programs, while businesses explored new markets for Earth's products and services. The cultural impact was equally profound. Human arts and culture, influenced by new alien interactions, began to reflect the broadened horizons. New genres of music, literature, and visual arts emerged, celebrating and questioning the role of humanity in the vast cosmos. As the initial excitement settled, Practical measures were implemented. Security protocols were strengthened to protect Earth's interests while maintaining the open and cooperative spirit necessary for their role in the Council. Military and scientific alliances were formalized, ensuring that Earth was both a contributor to and beneficiary of galactic peace and stability. Admiral Chang and Jack Miles, once the faces of Earth's bid for Council membership, continued to play pivotal roles. Chang led the integration of Earth's military capabilities with galactic defense systems, ensuring that human forces were prepared for any challenges they might face in space. Jack, on the other hand, 
took a prominent position in the diplomatic corps, navigating the complex web of galactic politics with a focus on sustaining and expanding the alliances formed during their entry into the Council. As Earth settled into its new role within the Galactic Council, strategic alliances became a cornerstone of human galactic policy. Ambassador Jack Miles and Admiral Lisa Chang were at the forefront, navigating the complex political landscape to secure partnerships beneficial to Earth and the galaxy at large. One of the first major alliances formed was with the technologically advanced Axion Consortium. The consortium, renowned for their innovations in energy and propulsion systems, found a complementary match in Earth's unique missile technology and adaptive engineering. Jack Miles worked closely with Axion's diplomats to craft an agreement that facilitated an exchange of technologies and joint development programs. Meanwhile, Admiral Chang led delegations to military bases across different star systems, sharing tactical approaches and participating in joint exercises. These efforts were not only aimed at demonstrating Earth's military capabilities, but also at learning from the galaxy's seasoned warriors. One such exercise, dubbed Operation Stellar Shield, involved simulated battles that tested the combined might of Earth and its allies against common threats. Back on Earth, the benefits of these alliances began to manifest in various sectors. Advanced alien technologies, once a subject of science fiction, were now part of Earth's industrial landscape, enhancing everything from manufacturing processes to telecommunications. In return, human innovations in software and missile design were adopted by several alien militaries, appreciated for their simplicity and effectiveness. Culturally, these alliances enriched human society immensely. Alien cuisines, languages, and arts became part of daily life on Earth, celebrated in festivals and academic curricula. This cultural exchange was not one-sided. Human culture also spread across the galaxy, with Earth's music, films, and literature gaining popularity among alien audiences. One particularly significant partnership was with the Rylar Empire, whose initial skepticism had turned into one of the strongest advocates for human inclusion. The Rylar Earth Security Initiative, RISI, was established, focusing on joint security operations and intelligence sharing. Sarnik, once a critic, now stood as a champion of this alliance, frequently visiting Earth to oversee the collaboration efforts. The human approach to diplomacy, characterized by openness and a readiness to learn, earned Earth a reputation as a valuable mediator in interstellar disputes. Jack Miles was often called upon to facilitate negotiations between conflicting parties, helping to resolve issues that had long stymied older council members. Amid these growing alliances, Earth maintained its sovereignty and the integrity of its own culture and systems. Measures were taken to ensure that while the planet benefited from and contributed to the galactic community, it did not become dependent or lose its identity among the stars. As Earth's influence grew, so did its responsibilities. Admiral Chang and her forces found themselves increasingly involved in peacekeeping missions, ensuring that the galaxy remained a stable and safe environment for all species. These missions, while challenging, provided invaluable experience and strengthened the bonds between Earth and its allies. The transformation of Earth's role within the Galactic Council from a newcomer to a leader marked a profound shift in interstellar dynamics. The strategic alliances formed over the years now bore fruit in a multitude of areas, promoting a galaxy-wide era of prosperity and innovation. Under the new galactic framework, Earth had emerged as a hub for trade and diplomacy. The interstellar trade routes that ran through the solar system were bustling with commerce, bringing goods and technologies from across the galaxy to Earth's doorstep, and vice versa. The economic boom was palpable, with cities on Earth and its colonies flourishing. Ambassador Jack Miles, now a seasoned diplomat, continued to play a pivotal role in shaping galactic policies. He was instrumental in forming the Intergalactic Trade and Commerce Organization, ITCO, which aimed to ensure fair trade practices across star systems and prevent economic exploitation. Earth's fair and balanced approach in these efforts was widely appreciated, enhancing its reputation as a stabilizing force in the galaxy. Meanwhile, Admiral Lisa Chang led the charge in integrating Earth's defense forces with the Galactic Defense Alliance, GDA. This integration wasn't just about military might. It involved sharing knowledge of tactical strategies, disaster response, and peacekeeping operations. The GDA's new command center, located on a space station orbiting Earth, served as a testament to Earth's central role in galactic security. Technological innovation also saw a golden age. 
the partnerships initiated by Earth led to breakthroughs in energy production, space travel, and medical sciences. Human universities and research institutes became coveted educational destinations for students from various species, eager to learn from the cradle of such diverse technological advancements. Culturally, the galaxy embraced a new era of interspecies cooperation and understanding. Earth's cultural festivals now included representations from dozens of alien civilizations, each sharing their unique traditions and arts. Likewise, human culture was celebrated on other planets, with Earth music festivals and film galas becoming significant events in the galactic calendar. In this new dawn, Earth also became a leader in environmental and ethical governance. The Earth-led Galactic Environmental Council, GEC, worked to ensure that the rapid expansion into new worlds did not come at the cost of ecological destruction. This initiative was crucial in fostering sustainable development practices across the galaxy. With Earth recognized as a pivotal leader within the Galactic Council, it was time to solidify its position by proactively addressing potential threats and opportunities beyond the current boundaries. The establishment of the Human Vanguard, an elite unit composed of humans and various alien species, marked a strategic move to extend Earth's influence and maintain stability in the expanding frontier. The Vanguard was more than a military unit. It was a symbol of unity and diversity, showcasing the best of collaborative efforts across the galaxy. Trained in Earth's tactical academies and equipped with a mix of human and alien technology, the Vanguard represented the pinnacle of interspecies cooperation. Admiral Lisa Chang, the architect behind the Vanguard's formation, oversaw its development from concept to reality. She selected Commander Raj Patel, a distinguished officer known for his bravery and diplomatic skills, to lead the unit. Under his command, the Vanguard was tasked with peacekeeping missions, exploratory ventures, and rapid response operations across unsettled and volatile regions of space. Their first mission, Operation Stellar Horizon, was to investigate a series of unexplained disappearances on the frontier of Council space. Rumors of a new, unidentified threat had begun to circulate, suggesting the presence of either a rogue civilization or unknown cosmic phenomena. As the Vanguard ships, equipped with advanced stealth and reconnaissance technology, slipped into the shadowy regions of the frontier, they encountered diverse challenges. These ranged from navigating complex nebulas to engaging with uncontacted species, both hostile and friendly. Each encounter tested the Vanguard's adaptability and the efficacy of Earth's leadership in real-world scenarios. Meanwhile, back on Earth and other Council worlds, the news of the Vanguard's missions was followed with keen interest. Media outlets covered their journeys extensively, capturing the imagination of billions and painting a vivid picture of their adventures. This not only bolstered support for the Council's endeavors, but also inspired a new generation to explore careers in space exploration and diplomacy. One significant encounter involved a distress signal from a ship belonging to the Thulians, a reclusive species known for their advanced bioengineering technology. The Vanguard swiftly responded, rescuing the crew and foiling a pirate attack. This act of bravery led to a formal alliance with the Thulians, who shared their biotech advancements in gratitude, further enhancing Earth's medical and biological research capabilities. The success of these missions bolstered Earth's reputation as an effective and benevolent power. Commander Patel's leadership and the valor of the Vanguard were celebrated, turning them into heroes not only on Earth but across the Council's territories.